Uh, one more thing is the actual drying unit, which offers up hot air to these two drying hoppers, uh, which is next door and has been in a crate for about a year now because I've been too busy to open it. So we'll go over next door and check out the the still new in the crate drying hopper, even though it's been sitting around for a year. <laughs> All right, let's do that. All right, inside of this crate, which has been sitting around for about a year now, is the dryer, which creates the desiccated hot air, which pumps into the drying hoppers that we just uncrated uh, a few minutes ago. So finally, I'm going to open this crate and get this bulk of this crate out of here, and then we can incorporate the new drying heater for our new system for the dual shot molding machine. Uh, this one's got screws in it. So uh, they must have changed their crate vendor over the last year or so. Actually, they're pretty nice screws. There we go. All right, well, this is what the inside looks like. Got our air circulating air pump down here and which pulls from this big main filter. And then there's just a bunch of different chambers that all seem to have desiccant. And then it looks like the rotary desiccant exchanger is this guy right here in the back. Let me do the GoPro so we get a better shot. Yeah, so this round drum apparently rotates, probably on the inside. There's, I'll bet you, oh, actually I can see a belt down there at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, I can see like that red stripe probably indicates the rotation. And then there's, yeah, there's a little belt there. Maybe I'll open the other side. It may show us a little bit more. Here's our little motor belt. Oh, the belt tensioner right here. That's kind of neat. Okay, well this thing rotates and the desiccation occurs in here and it regenerates itself through a few steps of, of drying. It's difficult to still see. I just see basically an inlet in the top and one in the, or an inlet and an outlet at the top. Oh, and then down here is more in that drum. So yeah, interesting. Oh, there's a air valve there. All sorts of things going on in here. Actually, I wonder if this pump is a regeneration circuit and then this one is the dry air circuit. But yeah, so there's an inlet and an outlet at the top of the rotating drum of desiccant. So there's three chambers at least in here with different uh, columns of, of desiccant, similar to the probably the stuff that you get in new electronics. 
like uh, you know something similar to this stuff, the silica gel. All of the all of these silica gel beads are equivalent. There are in this column, and it's rotating and slowly regenerating. So the return air. Let's see here. Oh, okay. The return air goes through this big filter. And then the return air exits the big filter and then goes into the bottom of the desiccating filter. Probably comes out the top. Yeah, it goes that way. And then winds up being the air exhaust after it goes through this heater right here. And then the regenerating or the drying part is this hose. Yeah, which goes yeah, okay, so the, the regeneration circuit, which is drying out the desiccant that's not actually in the drying circuit, but in the next chamber in the rotating cylinder, that wet air exits out this guy right here. So yeah, interesting. And then hot air to regenerate the desiccant comes, looks like straight out of the air pump. But again, I'm just, I just opened all this up, so I may not be fully understanding this thing. All right, so let's stick our panels back on. Whoop. There we go. And then I'm going to have to figure out how all this is going to be arranged in the back of the new molding machine, which is in the background there. But we can roll it back there and figure it out. All right, so the other advancement that we've made to the automation of the 90 ton, or uh, sorry, the 250 ton dual shot molding machine is to more completely integrate the drying system with our drying hoppers that I bought basically at Christmas time this year. So about six or seven months ago. Uh, well, now I'm actually getting it hooked up. So I do have some more footage showing the interior of this drying system. But this is a, a, a rotating drum dryer. So inside of this dryer, there is basically a rotating drum full of desiccant, like silica desiccant that you would get in, with new electronics or sometimes the little packages. The little packets are in your pockets of new stuff that you buy. Uh, well, there's a whole lot of that inside of this heater or this drying unit. And it also has a lot of uh, hot air dryers and what happens is the, the drying system will blow dry, hot air after it's passed through the desiccant drum. And I've actually uh, purchased these Y branch uh, headers with uh, shut off gates, you know, because sometimes we only dry plastic in one unit and, and turn off the other one. And that's done by, by effectively just closing the airflow of the dry, hot air. But today we're gonna be running both of these and what happens is dry hot air comes out of the unit uh, and you set that so that you don't melt your plastic in the drying hopper chamber itself. But yeah, hot air comes out, goes into the chamber right there. And then there's an inner tube that flows the hot air down to the bottom, disperses the hot air, and then it, and then it flows back up through the top and then returns via this high temperature air duct back to the air return in the air drying system. Uh, you may be able to see the, the down tube in there. Yeah, in fact, you can see what the inside looks like. So that's hot air that, that kind of flows down that center tube into the pile of ABS that we're looking through the little side glass here. And then, uh, so inside of this unit, the, the, that drum I was talking about, it slowly turns and it's constantly exchanging the desiccant because as the desiccant um, 
returns with, with damp, cooler air from the plastic that's being dried, this stuff. It actually flows that, that damp air through the hot desiccant and the desiccant will pull the moisture out of the air. And then that air is recirculated and then flowed through and then back out to the plastic. Now when the drum is turning, it's also uh, regenerating the desiccant. So the hot desiccant on this side of the drum will spin around, or the, I'm sorry, the, the wet desiccant on like the left side of the drum will slowly spin around to a, another section which has even got hotter air. And that hotter air will actually dry out the desiccant on the right side of the drum. And then when that drier desiccant is fully dried, it'll, it'll keep rotating back to the wet side where it's pulling more moisture out of the plastic. So it's a continual uh, wetting and drying cycle in this drum that spins. And there's several chambers in the drum. And so they're all kind of just slowly absorbing moisture and then dumping the, the moisture out from much hotter get, um, airflow and, and redesiccating it so it goes back and, and continues to dry the plastic in a continual rotating cycle. And then this port here is the very hot air that is dumping out the wet uh, moisture and hot air from the regeneration side of the rotating drum of desiccant. Then there's a bunch of other features. Down here is a big filter and this filters out the, uh, the dust that you can get if you're drying mostly regrind plastic as when you grind plastic up it creates a lot of dust which is in your system so you can quickly clog up plastic conveying systems with regrind plastic dust. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's turn it on. We got a little, just excuse the air traffic. Yeah, so right now our, our regeneration temperature and that's what dries the desiccant and the, and the rotating drum is set to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. And sorry, this is English or United States, so we use uh, Fahrenheit. And then um, the set value for drying the plastic itself is 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't know what that is. It's probably 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, this, this plastic, this ABS likes to melt easily and clog up at the, the base of the unit down into the vacuum feed itself. So I leave this temperature kind of low so I don't have to get in there with, a, with basically a, a plastic rod and break up the partially melted uh, lumps of ABS plastic that, that wind up getting clogged up down here. All right, so when I turn this thing on, it's kind of noisy. So I guess the final thing that we can talk about is on the back of these poppers, we've got a vacuum tube, which goes into the, basically the the bottom chamber of the desiccant dryer hopper itself. And then when the molding machine needs plastic, it will create a vacuum in this tube, suck plastic out of the bottom of the dryer, which goes all the way over to our vacuum hopper, which I've shown in previous episodes. But basically as this sensor, which is actually depleted, when that yellow sensor sees that there's no plastic, which is now, then it will actually activate the, basically a vacuum motor up here, which sucks plastic from the drying hopper back there into the injection unit. So I, I guess I could demonstrate that because I'm going to be starting this, this machine up uh, actually right now. In fact, I should probably get these heaters going. Oh, okay, so they're, they're going. All right, I got to reconnect these two circuits. <laughs> okay, so all that being said, uh, let me turn on the dryer now so you can hear how kind of noisy it is. And then we can watch how the um, system will start to heat up everything. This is the dew point, which is a, effectively telling you how dry the plastic or the air is that is going to the plastic pellets in the chamber. Uh, it, it'll tell you the equivalent how dry it is in degrees Fahrenheit. So another way of saying that is uh, on a really cold winter day, the air outside is actually very dry because effectively the, the, the moisture, the H2O in the air uh, precipitates out and uh, turns into dew or snow. <laughs> and so really dry air is measured in degrees of uh, Fahrenheit 
uh, usually in minus degrees Fahrenheit. So right now the air inside of, that's coming out of this chamber is as dry as equivalent to a day that's minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, this number will go all the way, or, which is the dew point, which is an, a way of measuring how dry the air is. Uh, usually the dew point for the dry air coming out of this, this process dryer is about minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So the equivalent would be the, the air coming out is as dry as, as if it was minus 75 degrees outside. Uh, so, which effectively has probably never been reached on Earth. Maybe the South Pole or the North Pole in the dead of winter. Anyway, so that's how it, it uh, calculates and it real time measures the dew point. So it's saying, uh, in fact, well now it's going back up. So it may have just rotated the drum to the, to the wetter portion of the desiccant. But anyway, as this thing stabilizes, it'll be down at around minus 70 degrees. Yeah, and then, uh, so the idea with these dryers is that the plastic in the bottom of the dryer, where the, the hot dry air is kind of flowing up, is the driest, and it's ready to go into the, basically the vacuum loader on the back of the unit, up into the vacuum loader of the molding machine to, to be turned into plastic parts. And then as, as this thing starts to get lower, you can see we're, we're halfway through the side glass, I'll add uh, new fresh ABS plastic with the color concentrate already added into the top, which will be the wettest portion of the plastic. So it basically slowly progresses through and is, is wet up here, it gets drier and drier and drier until it's at its driest point down here and then it goes into the molding machine. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. The one more thing that's missing is the vacuum venturi loaders that will be ultimately loaded onto the top of these chambers. And then there'll be a container, kind of like this, this metal trash can that'll be sitting out here with pre-mixed pre uh, plastic with its color in it. And then we'll be able to load the pre-mixed pre color directly into the hoppers. I haven't gotten to that point yet, uh, and I only have one of them. So if the first one works out well, which I'd probably load onto the larger hopper, then I'll buy a second one and stick it on our secondary hopper too. But that'll be happening next. Uh, as far as the cooling system, I still have this, this refrigeration unit and my kludge together uh, water and, and pump system in that little basin right there. So I'm definitely gonna be updating this soon. In fact, I've got new pipes on the wall, and uh, well, actually, this system's just going to move over to the corner where the air compressor is currently. Uh, but I'm not actually going to buy anything better because I don't need anything better. This act system actually overcools what I need right now for the machines in the front as well as this large molding machine in the back. And that's mostly, as I mentioned, these more modern molding machines are a lot more energy efficient. So. So, so far this is working out. And this is just a fish tank chiller that I bought on Amazon. They even say it's just one and a half horsepower. They don't even give a tonnage spec. So, all right, well in about an hour or so, I'm gonna start up the molding machine. Uh, we can start the vacuum loader. So let me, uh, let me set that up real quick. All right, so I just plugged in the vacuum loader and I got this remote control. And I'm going to turn it on, basically. And I think my remote's dead, though. Well, I'll have to manually turn it on. So basically, you just flip the switch on. And you'll see it's like going through a process. It's got some, uh, some air valves in the top. I can put a compressed air line in that black push the connect fitting right there. And what it's doing is and the vacuum releases, you'll see how that little gate opens and it fills the chamber with plastic. I like I was saying, well actually you can see right here, this is regrind dust in the top of that chamber. And it kind of gets messy. Inside of this 
vacuum unit, there's a, a filter which can get clogged by all this dust. And I think what happens is if you add a compressed air line to the top, it will actually blow air backwards across that filter from the air compressed or compressed air system of your shop and uh, clean the filter before it actually turns on the vacuum motor to load more plastic. So it's kind of like a self-cleaning system so that your vacuum filter doesn't clog up and you lose vacuum. Ultimately, you won't be able to suck plastic up. But we're running a new virgin plastic, so it's not nearly as big of a problem.